Hey, I'm Ryan Miller, showing you today how to set up and make a simple game with the CG Toolkit. I've got the package right here. This is the, uh, the Unity package for the CG Toolkit. I'm just going to import that straight away into a brand new empty project. Okay, and here we have the CG Toolkit folder. So CG Toolkit is for making games quickly. Um, that's a pretty broad thing to say. So to get a little bit more in depth, CG Toolkit is for creating generic platform style characters in 2D or 3D that can have some simple attacks some simple health and some simple movement. It's for creating simple enemies as well with the, the same kind of parameters. It's for creating interactions, um, which is triggers and events. So when I step on a switch, uh, an object moves. When I move through an area or when I get close to something, something gets destroyed. I'm going to walk through all those uh, steps later and the, the interaction window which lets us create these without the use of any code. Um, and there's also a bunch of utilities in this uh, toolkit as well. So these utilities let you do things in Unity a little bit faster than, than normal. Basically just some functionality that I kind of wish was built into the engine already. So. To get started here, um, I can jump into the Game Object menu and see the CG Toolkit menu inside of there. A uh, great place to start is Create Player and World. So when I create a player and world, you can see right away I get a ground plane, some light, um, some distance fog kind of acting as the light cascading off to the background, and the Create Character window pops up. So under this Create Character window, this is how I can create my player character. I could also create an enemy character if I wanted to right now, but I'm going to make a player first. Um, I'm going to give this player my own name, so Ryan, he's a player. I don't have any mesh right now, so I'm just going to leave this blank. That's no sweat. We can add one later if we want to. Um, health 3 is fine, and let's give them a ranged attack. I can choose to move in 2D if I want. That's for a, a side-scroller game where you're only moving on one axis. So I'll keep that off for now too. I do want a camera with my player, so that'll create a camera that's aimed at my player and set to follow them around. And for my controls, I can do touch base, which is for a, a mouse or touch screen game where you click where you want to go. Uh, a button based game where you can use the keyboard or a gamepad, or you can have them both together if you wish. So when you click create character, we'll have a character right away that we can jump right in, hit play, and run around as. There we go. So I can press the arrow keys or WASD, or if I had an Xbox 360 controller, I could use that to move around as well. Um, jump with spacebar and attack with control. So you can see the default character controller, that, that character creation wizard, has given me the default projectile to fire when I press control. Okay, so a little bit about how this is actually built together. Um, nothing terribly magical happening behind the scenes here. These windows that are creating things are basically just adding components to an object for us, configuring them and getting them to talk to each other. So we can see that this typical player in CG Toolkit is made up of a, uh, a transform, of course. It's got a capsule collider so that it will have collision, rigid body to respond to gravity and physics. Uh, movement normal is the generic script for characters that move that's used for the enemy as well as the player. Um, control buttons, which is uh, end control touch, which handle taking input and applying that to movement or attacks or whichever uh, controls we have, and player mortality that gives this character the ability to live or die or take damage. So you can play through the settings on your own and figure out how to configure and tweak your character exactly how you want it. For example, I could do a very, very fast character if I wanted here by turning up the, the move speed min and max and the acceleration. Now I can zip around really quickly but I'm going to set that back to defaults for now. So I can just click this gear up here and hit reset. So if I want to create an enemy, I can jump right back into that game object CG toolkit menu. Um, and I'll create a character this time. I'll make sure that's an NPC. So I'm going to call this random NPC. Uh, he's not going to be aggressive, he's just going to wander around. Okay, so we'll create that. It's created right on top of my player, so we'll have to move him off there. And to make him look a little bit different, I'll make a new material and we'll, we'll give him a different color. So I'll create a material inside my project view, let's call that blue, and make him blue. So I should be able to 
drag and drop that. There we go. So we'll get a couple of these. And now when I play, we should see these just milling about and wandering. There we go. So we got some kind of townsfolk style NPCs, picking random directions and walking in random directions. Um, if I wanted to make them not random NPCs, but uh, mean NPCs, I don't need to recreate them from scratch. I can if I want, but all I need to do is turn the aggro radius up. See there's aggro tag here. That's who they look for when they want to kill somebody. So my tag is player. So I will set that to player. Uh oh, there you go. So now they're giving chase. So that's enemies. They're pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, we can go into more detail about those later, but right now I want to show you interactions. So interactions are very, very cool. Um, you can see in the project folder here, there's a lot of triggers and a lot of actions. So how these work, they're very, very powerful. The triggers respond to events that happen in game. So these are usually caused by the player. If I step on something, if we attack something, if we kill something, uh, if we press a key, etc. But they also have things like uh, trigger by time. So after a certain amount of time, something can happen. Um, progress trigger, which is kind of like a, a collection quest. Um, and then the actions are things that result from those actions. So when something is killed or something is destroyed, we can make another object move or rotate. Um, we can spawn another object, so bring another object into play. We can shake the screen. Um, lots and lots of things we can do with this. So we can hook these up manually by attaching these components to game objects in our scene, or we can use the create interaction window to do this for us. So the create interaction window has all of these built into it. It just gives you an interface for setting these up uh, very quickly and, and kind of minimizing things going wrong. So I'm going to create a couple new game objects and I'll use these as a trigger and an action to demonstrate how this works. So I'm going to create a cube. Um, this is going to be my trigger, so this is going to be the thing I interact with. So I'm going to call this Step On Me. And then I create a sphere. So I'll put the sphere over here, make sure I can see it in my game view. Yeah, that looks good. So I'm going to call this Watch Me Move. Oh, let's fix that. There we go. So now with my Create Interaction window, I'm going to click on my trigger first. So it says please choose a trigger method and click next. I can decide how I want this to be triggered. So um, by collider means when I touch that box collider as a player, it will be triggered. If I didn't want this to actually block my character, I could set it to an is trigger and use a trigger volume. Then I can walk through it to trigger it. Um, I could also just use distance, might be a little bit easier. Um, I'm probably not gonna kill it or destroy it. I'll just stick to collider for now, keep it simple. Okay, so now it wants me to select my action object. So what is going to happen when this trigger is interacted with? So I'll select this sphere, and the action I'll give to the sphere is object move. So object move, don't worry if this looks a little bit daunting. All this does is it moves an object to a new position. So this is my current position for the object. I'll move it up, and we'll set the move to. And if we want to view what we did, I can view the start and view the two. That looks pretty good. I'm just going to make it raise up in the sky. Um, and then I'll click Create Interaction. So now we can see on the Step On Me object, we've got this new Trigger by Collider component. And on the Watch Me Move, we've got an Object Move component. And these are automatically uh, hooked up to each other thanks to that script. So when I step on this, that sphere will move up. And because it's resettable, it's moving back down when I move off of the trigger. I could change that. If I change step on me to not be resettable, it'll move up and then it will stay up. A couple more things we can do with this. Um, I'll create another, I'll create a sphere this time. And I'll make this a uh, trigger so that we can walk through it. That'll create a capsule. Or rather, maybe I'll create a bunch of capsules that kind of get in my way. So let's try arranging a bunch of these together to make kind of a wall. Okay. Um, something nifty that this toolkit can do, if you press Control-G, we can group things. 
at long last that features in Unity. Um, and I'm going to call this Wall of Capsules. So I'll make a new interaction here. So game object, the CG toolkit, create interaction. So I'm going to go by trigger volume. So when I walk through this trigger, it's set to is trigger. So next, I'll create this wall of capsule and it will destroy. So it destroyed this object. Okay. So now you can see as I run up against this wall, I can't really get past it. If I go and walk through the sphere, aha, it's gone. One more thing I'll show you before we uh, uh, go into other videos with more interactions. There is a CG toolbar here. And what the CG toolbar is, it's a, a collection of common utilities that I like to use uh, when I'm building levels, make things go a little bit faster. So you can dock this to the side here if you like, or you can just leave it floating. Um, and this gives you quick access to the interactions, but it also gives you access to a couple of little utilities. So one of my favorites is this ground command. So let's say I placed all these objects, uh, let's say they're meshes I imported, and they're not quite floating on the ground, and I want to get them to the ground quickly. Well, I can select all of these, hit the ground button, and they're automatically going to try to snap to the ground below them. Pretty nifty. If something's under the ground, so I can use this to ground my character, but if something's underneath the ground, it will just give you a little warning saying there's no ground detected below. Um, one thing to keep in mind, if I try to move just this capsule, it has no collider on it. So when it grounds, it's going to ground by the center of the collider, or the center of the object. If I select the object with the collider on it, see how there's a capsule collider here, um, and I try to ground this, it will move down to the bottom of the collider. Um, snap is just a simple grid snap. So the rest of these apply to whichever selection we have here. So transform means all position, rotation, and scale but I can snap just their position to the nearest whole number. So you can see this is at 5.02, 1.004, um, lots of decimal places here. If I snap this, it will just snap to whole numbers. And I can do the same for rotation or scale just by changing this drop-down menu. So I can say scale, um, snap, so it snaps to three, rounds everything up. Um, zero is a quick reset, so I'm not sure how many time, how much you've used Unity, but I find myself a lot of the time changing the position or the scale, the rotation to zero uh, manually. You can just use this, so I'll go to position and zero this, and now it just resets the position to zero. And we can undo that. Um, and then lastly, there's the copy and paste here. So if I wanted to move this object to exactly the player's position, I can select the player and copy their position, select this object and paste position, and it will go exactly where that player was. Um, there's also bring near. So bring near, we all know that um, if an object is off screen and we want to find it, we can press the F key to zoom in on it really quickly. But sometimes we want the off screen and we want the object to come to us. So that's what bring near is good at. So if I click bring near with this object selected, it's going to bring it into the center of my camera view so I can find it. That's all for now. Stay tuned for the next videos and I'll, I'll show you more of the toolkit.